right after the first presidential debate between President Obama and Republican nominee Mitt Romney in October 3, 2012, in Denver, CNN wrote, the sheer panic Democrats felt in 2012 after Mitt Romney demolished Barack Obama at their first presidential debate in Denver can be overstated. This video presents the first segment of the debate about jobs in the area of economy. And here is a list of advanced vocabulary and idioms. Resilience Resilience is the ability to be happy or successful again after something difficult or bad has happened. The synonym is toughness. Example, he showed great courage and resilience in fighting back from a losing position to win the game. Perspective Perspective is a particular way of considering something. The synonym is a point of view. Example, her attitude lends a fresh perspective to the subject. Skill, suddenly change direction or position. For example, the car has skewed across the track. Roll back. Roll back means to reduce the power or importance of something or to reverse the progress made with something. For example, many of the gains made in the last 20 years have been rolled back. Wind down. Wind down means to end gradually or in stages or to cause something to do this. Here is an example. Unfortunately, the party was just winding down as we got there. Double down. Double down means to continue to do something in an even more determined way than before. For example, instead of learning from his mistakes, he doubling down. Crack down. Crackdown means to take severe measures against someone or something. For example, we need to crack down hard on workplaces that break safety regulations. If you will, if you will is used as a way of making a concession in a sentence. Example. He wasn't a very honest person, a liar, if you will. Trickle down, especially of money, means to spread from rich to poor people through the economic system of a country. For example, wealth is failing to trickle down through society. Loophole. Loophole is a small mistake in an agreement or law that gives someone the chance to avoid having to do something. Here is an example. The company employed lawyers to find loopholes in environmental protection laws. Tax break. Tax break is a change in the law that results in the opportunity to pay less in taxes. For example, with this change, high-income people will get a tax break. Instructive. Instructive means useful and informative. Example, it is instructive to compare the two projects. Weather. Weather is to deal successfully with a difficult situation or a problem. For example, as a small new company, they did well to weather the recession.
pick up the tab. Pick up the tab means to pay for something, especially for what someone else has bought or used. For example, the company will pick up the tab for this trip. Sales pitch. Sales pitch is a talk or a way of talking that is intended to persuade you to buy something. Here is an example. I didn't want to listen to his sales pitch. Now let's watch the video. Good evening from the Magnus Arena at the University of Denver in Denver, Colorado. I'm Jim Lara of the PBS NewsHour, and I welcome you to the first of the 2012 presidential debates between President Barack Obama, the Democratic nominee, and former Massachusetts Governor Mitt Romney, the Republican nominee. This debate and the next three, two presidential, one vice presidential, are sponsored by the Commission on presidential debates. Tonight's 90 minutes will be about domestic issues and will follow a format designed by the commission. There will be six roughly 15 minute segments with two minute answers for the first question, then open discussion for the remainder of each segment. Thousands of people offered suggestions on segment subjects or questions via the internet and other means but I made the final selections, and for the record, they were not submitted for approval to the commission or the candidates. The segments, as I announced in advance, will be three on the economy and one each on health care, the role of government, and governing, with an emphasis throughout on differences, specifics, and choices. Both candidates will also have two-minute closing statements. The audience here in the hall has promised to remain silent. No cheers, applause, boos, hisses, among other noisy, distracting things, so we may all concentrate on what the candidates have to say. There is a noise exception right now, though, as we welcome President Obama and Governor Romney. Jim. Gentlemen, welcome to you both. Let's start the economy, segment one, and let's begin with jobs. What are the major differences between the two of you uh, about how you would go about creating new jobs? You have two minutes. Each of you have two minutes to start. A coin toss is determined. Mr. President, you go first. Well, thank you very much, Jim, for this opportunity. I want to thank Governor Romney and the University of Denver for your hospitality. Uh, there are a lot of points I want to make tonight, but uh, the most important one is that uh, 20 years ago I became the luckiest man on earth because Michelle Obama agreed to marry me. And so uh, I just want to wish, uh, sweetie, uh, you happy anniversary and let you know that a year from now, we will not be celebrating it in front of 40 million people. Uh, you know, four years ago, we went through uh, the worst financial crisis since the Great Depression. Millions of jobs were lost. The auto industry was on uh, the brink of collapse. Uh, the financial system had frozen up. And because of the resilience and the determination of the American people, uh, we've begun to fight our way back. Uh, over the last 30 months, we've seen 5 million jobs in the private sector created. Uh, the auto industry has come roaring back, and housing uh, has begun to rise. But we all know that we've still got a lot of work to do. And so the question here tonight is not uh, where we've been, but where we're going. Uh, Governor Romney uh, has a perspective that says uh, if we cut taxes, skew towards the wealthy, and roll back regulations, that uh, we'll be better off. I've got a different view. I think we've got to invest in education and training. I think it's important for us to develop new sources of energy here in America, that we change our tax code to make sure that we're helping small businesses and companies that are investing here in the United States, that 
uh, we take some of the money that we're saving as we wind down uh, two wars uh, to rebuild America, and that we reduce our deficit in a balanced way that allows us to make these critical investments. Now, it ultimately, it's going to be up to the voters, to you, uh, which path we should take. Uh, are we going to double down on the top-down economic policies that help to get us into this mess, or do we embrace a new economic patriotism that says America does best when the middle class does best? And I'm looking forward to having that debate. Governor Romney, two minutes. Thank you, Jim. It's an honor to be here with you, and I appreciate the chance to be with the President. I'm pleased to be at the University of Denver. I appreciate their welcome, and also the Presidential uh, Commission on these debates. And congratulations to you, Mr. President, on your anniversary. I'm sure this was the mo most romantic place you could imagine <laughs> here, here with me. So I, <laughs> congratulations. Um, th this is obviously a very tender topic. I've had the occasion over the last couple of years of meeting people across the country. I was in uh, Dayton, Ohio, and a woman grabbed my arm and she said, I've been out of work since May. Can you help me? Uh, and yesterday was at a rally in Denver, and a woman came up to her with a baby in her arms and said, Ann, my husband has had four jobs in three years, part-time jobs. He's lost his most recent job, and we've now just lost our home. Can you help us? And the answer is yes, we can help, but it's going to take a different path, not the one we've been on, not the one the President describes as a top-down uh, cut taxes for the rich. That's not what I'm going to do. My plan has five basic parts. One, get us energy independent, North American energy independent. That creates about four million jobs. Number two, open up more trade, particularly in Latin America. Crack down on China if and when they cheat. Number three, make sure our people have the skills they need to succeed and the best schools in the world. We're far away from that now. Number four, get us to a balanced budget. Number five, champion small business. It's small business that creates the jobs in America. And over the last four years, small business people have decided that America may not be the place to open a new business because new business startups are down to a 30-year low. I know what it takes to get small business growing again, to hire people. Now, I'm concerned that the path that we're on has just been unsuccessful. The President has a view very similar to the view he had when he ran four years ago, that a bigger government, spending more, taxing more, regulating more, if you will, trickle-down government would work. That's not the right answer for America. I'll restore the vitality that gets America working again. Thank you. Mr. President, uh, please respond directly to what the governor just said about trickle-down, uh, his trickle-down approach, he's, as he said yours is. Well, uh, let me talk specifically about what I think we need to do. Uh, first, we've got to improve our education system. And we've made enormous progress drawing on ideas both from Democrats and Republicans uh, that are already starting to show gains in some of the toughest to deal with schools. Uh, we've got a program called Race to the Top that uh, has prompted reforms in 46 states around the country, raising standards, improving how we train teachers. So now I want to hire another 100,000 uh, new math and science teachers. And create two million more slots in our community colleges so that people can get trained for the jobs that are out there right now. And I want to make sure that we keep uh, tuition low for our young people. Uh, when it comes to our tax code, you know, Governor Romney and I both agree that our corporate tax rate is too high. Uh, so I want to lower it, particularly for manufacturing, taking it down to 25 percent. But I also want to close uh, those loopholes that are giving incentives for companies that are shipping jobs overseas, I want to provide tax breaks for companies that are investing here in the United States. Uh, on energy, Governor Romney and I, we both agree that we've got to uh, boost American energy production. And oil and natural gas production are uh, higher than they've been in, in years. But I also believe that we've got to look at the energy sources of the future, like wind and solar and biofuels, and make those investments. So. All of this is possible. Now, in order for us to do it, we do have to close our deficit. And one of the things I'm sure we'll be discussing tonight is uh, how do we deal with our tax code? And how do we make sure that we are reducing spending in a responsible way? But also, how do we have enough revenue to make those investments? And this is where there's a difference, because Governor Romney's central economic plan uh, calls for a $5 trillion tax cut on top of the extension of the Bush tax cuts, so that's another trillion dollars, and $2 trillion in additional military spending that uh, the military hasn't asked for. That's $8 trillion. Uh, how we pay for that, reduce the deficit, and make the investments uh, that we need to make without 
uh, dumping those costs onto middle class Americans, I think, is one of the central questions of this campaign. Both of you have spoke, spoken about a lot of different things, and we're going to try to get through them mm -hmm. in as specific a way as we possibly can. But first, uh, Governor Romney, do you have a question that you'd like to ask the president directly? about something you just said? Well, sure. I'd like to clear up the record and go through piece by piece. First of all, I don't have a $5 trillion tax cut. I don't have a tax cut of the scale that you're talking about. My view is that we ought to provide tax relief to people in the middle class. But I'm not going to reduce the share of taxes paid by high-income people. High-income people are doing just fine in this economy. They'll do fine whether you're president or I am. The people who are having the hard time right now are middle-income Americans. Under the president's policies, middle-income Americans have been buried. They're, they're just being crushed. Middle-income Americans have seen their income come down by $4,300. This is a tax in and of itself. I'll call it the economy tax. It's been crushing. At the same time, gasoline prices have doubled under the president. Electric rates are up. Food prices are up. Health care costs have gone up by $2,500 a family. Middle-income families are being crushed. And so the question is how to get them going again, and I've described it. It's energy and trade, the right kind of training programs, balancing our budget, and helping small business. Th those are the, the cornerstones of my plan. But the President mentioned a couple of other ideas. I'll just note. First, education. I agree. Education is key, particularly the future of our economy. But our training programs right now, we've got 47 of them housed in the federal government, reporting to eight different agencies. Overhead is overwhelming. We've got to get those dollars back to the states and go to the workers so they can create their own pathways to getting the training they need for jobs that will really help them. The second area, taxation. We agree we ought to bring the tax rates down, and I do, both for corporations and for individuals. But in order for us not to lose revenue and have the government run out of money, I also lower deductions and credits and exemptions so that we keep taking in the same money when you also account for growth. The third area, energy. Energy is critical, and the President pointed out correctly that production of oil and gas in the U.S. is up, but not due to his policies, in spite of his policies. Mr. President, all of the increase in natural gas and oil has happened on private land, not on government land. On government land, your administration has cut the number of permits and licenses in half. If I'm President, I'll double them and also get the, the oil from offshore in Alaska. And I'll bring that pipeline in from Canada. And by the way, I like coal. I'm going to make sure we can continue to burn clean coal. People in the coal industry feel like it's getting crushed by your policies. I want to get America and North America energy independent so we can create those jobs. And finally, with regards to that tax cut, look, I'm not looking to cut massive taxes and to reduce the, the revenues going to the government. My, my number one principle is there'll be no tax cut that adds to the deficit. I want to underline that. No tax cut that adds to the deficit. But I do want to reduce the burden pay, being paid by middle-income Americans. And, I ha and to do that, that also means I cannot reduce the burden paid by high-income Americans. So any, any uh, language to the contrary is simply not accurate. Mr. President? Well, I think uh, let's talk about taxes because I think uh, it's instructive. Now, uh, four years ago when I stood on this stage, I said that uh, I would cut taxes for middle-class families. Uh, and that's exactly what I did. Uh, we cut taxes for middle-class families uh, by about $3,600. And the reason is because I believe that we do best when the middle class is doing well. And by giving them those tax cuts, they had a little more money in their pocket. And so maybe they can buy a new car. They are certainly uh, in a better position to weather uh, the extraordinary recession that we went through. They can buy a computer for their kid who's going off to college, which means they're spending more money, businesses have more customers, businesses make more profits, and then hire more workers. Now, Governor Romney's proposal that he's been promoting for 18 months calls for uh, a $5 trillion tax cut on top of $2 trillion of additional spending for our military. And he is saying that he is going to pay for it by closing loopholes and deductions. The problem is that uh, he's been asked a over 100 times how you would close those deductions and loopholes, and he hasn't been able to identify them. But I'm going to make an important point here, Jim. Uh, when you add up all the loopholes and deductions that upper-income individuals uh, can, are currently taking advantage of, you take those all away. You don't come close to paying for $5 trillion in tax cuts and $2 trillion in additional military spending. 
And that's why independent studies looking at this said the only way to meet Governor Romney's pledge of not reducing the deficit or, or, or not uh, adding to the deficit is by burdening middle class families. The average middle class family with children would pay about $2,000 more. Now that's not my analysis, that's the analysis of economists who have looked at this. And, and that kind of top-down top economics where folks at the top are doing well, so the average person making three million bucks is getting a $250,000 tax break, while middle-class families uh, are burdened further, that's not what I believe is a recipe for economic growth. All right. What is the difference? Well, uh, let's just stay well, on taxes. But I, but for, I get, uh, right, right. Yeah, yeah just, uh, let's just stay on taxes for yeah. a moment. Yeah. Well, but, but what is virtually, the difference? Er, virtually everything he just said about my tax plan is inaccurate. All right. So, so if, if the tax plan he described were a tax plan I was asked to support, I'd say absolutely not. I'm not looking for a $5 trillion tax cut. What I've said is I won't put in place a tax cut that adds to the deficit. That's part one. So there's no economist can say Mitt Romney's tax plan adds $5 trillion if I say I will not add to the deficit with my tax plan. Number two, I will not reduce the share paid by high-income individuals. I know that you and your running mate keep saying that, and I know it's a popular thing to say with a lot of people, but it's just not the case. Look, I got five boys. I'm used to people saying something that's not always true, but just keep on repeating it and ultimately hoping I'll believe it. But that, that is not the case, all right? I, I will not reduce the taxes paid by high-income Americans. And number three, I will not, under any circumstances, raise taxes on middle-income families. I will lower taxes on middle-income families. Now, you cite a study. There's six other studies that looked at the study you described and say it's completely wrong. I saw a study that came out today that said you're going to raise taxes by three to four thousand dollars on middle-income families. There are all these studies out there, but let's get at the bottom line. That is, I want to bring down rates. I want to bring the rates down at the same time, lower deductions and exemptions and credits and so forth, so we keep getting the revenue we need. And you think, well, then why lower the rates? And the reason is because small business pays that individual rate. 54% of America's workers work in businesses that are taxed not at the corporate tax rate, but at the individual tax rate. And if we lower that rate, they will be able to hire more people. For me, this is about jobs. Right. This is about That's getting jobs started. for the American people. Yeah. Do you challenge what the governor just said about his, his own plan? Well, for 18 months, he's been running on this tax plan. And uh, now, five weeks before the election, uh, he's saying that his big, bold idea is, never mind. And uh, the fact is that if you are lowering the rates the way you described, Governor, then it is not possible to come up with enough deductions and loopholes that only affect high-income individuals to avoid either raising the deficit or burdening the middle class. It's, it's math. It's arithmetic. Now, uh, Governor Romney and I do share a deep interest in encouraging small business growth. So at the same time that my tax plan has already lowered taxes for 98 uh, percent of families, I also lowered taxes for small businesses 18 times. And what I want to do is continue the tax rates, the tax cuts that we put into place for small businesses and families. But I have said that for incomes over $250,000 a year, that we should go back to the rates that we had when Bill Clinton was president, when we created 23 million new jobs, went from deficit to surplus, and created a whole lot of millionaires to boot. And the reason this is important is because by doing that, we can not only reduce the deficit, we can not only uh, encourage job growth through small businesses, but we're also able to make the investments that are necessary in education or in energy. And we do have a difference, though, when it comes to definitions of small business. Now, under under my plan, 97 percent of small businesses would not see uh, their income taxes go up. Governor Romney says, well, those top 3 percent, they're the job creators, they'd be burdened. But under Governor Romney's uh, definition, there are a whole bunch of millionaires and billionaires who are small businesses. Donald Trump is a small business. And I know Donald Trump doesn't like to think of himself as small anything, but, uh, but that's how you define small businesses if you're getting business income. And, that kind of approach, I believe, will not grow our economy because the only way to pay for it without either burdening the middle class or blowing up our deficit is to make drastic cuts in 
things like education, making sure that uh, we are continuing to invest in basic science and research, all the things that are helping America grow. And I think that would be a mistake. All right, Jim. Let me just come back on that on that point, which just is for the, these, just for the these small businesses excuse, we're talking about. Excuse me, just, uh -huh. just so everybody understands. Yeah, we're way over our first 15 minutes. It's fun, isn't it? It's okay. It's great. That's great. Okay. No problem. <laughs> now you all don't have you That's don't good. have a problem. I don't have a problem because we're still on the economy. Right. But we're going to come back to taxes and we're going to move on to the deficit and good. a lot of other things too. Okay, but go ahead, sir. You bet. Well, President, you're, Mr. President, you're absolutely right, which is that, that uh, with regards to 97 percent of the businesses are not, not taxed at the 35 percent tax rate, they're taxed at a lower rate. But those businesses that are in the last 3 percent of businesses happen to employ half, half of all the people who work in small business. Those are the businesses that employ one quarter of all the workers in America. And your plan is to take their tax rate from 35 percent to 40 percent. Now, and I talked to a guy who has a very small business. He's in the electronics business in, uh, in St. Louis. He has four employees. He said he and his son calculated how much they pay in taxes. Mm -hmm. Federal income tax, federal payroll tax, state income tax, state sales tax, state property tax, gasoline tax. It added up to well over 50 percent of what they earned. And your plan is to take the tax rate on successful small businesses from 35 percent to 40 percent. The National Federation of Independent Businesses has said that will cost 700,000 jobs. I don't want to cost jobs. My priority is jobs. And so what I do is I bring down the tax rates, lower deductions and exemptions. The same idea behind Bowles Simpson, by the way. Get the rates down, lower deductions and exemptions to create more jobs because there's nothing right. better for getting us to a balanced budget than having more people working, earning more money, paying more taxes, that's by far the most effective and efficient way to get this budget balanced. Jim, I, uh, you may want to move on to another topic, but I, I would just say this to the American people. Uh, if you believe that we can cut taxes by $5 trillion and add $2 trillion in additional spending uh, that the military is not asking for, $7 trillion, just to give you a sense, over 10 years, that's more than our entire defense budget. And you think that by closing loopholes and deductions for the well-to-do, somehow you will not end up uh, picking up the tab, then Governor Romney's plan uh, may work for you. But uh, I think math, common sense, and our history uh, shows us that's not a recipe for job growth. Oh, look, we've tried this. We've tried both approaches. Uh, the approach that Governor Romney is talking about is the same sales pitch that was made in 2001 and 2003. And we ended up with the slowest job growth in 50 years. We ended up moving from surplus to deficits, and it all culminated in the worst financial crisis since the Great Depression. Now, Bill Clinton tried the approach that I'm talking about. We created 23 million new jobs. We went from deficit to surplus. and Businesses did very well. So in some ways, we've got some data on which approach is more likely to create jobs and opportunity for Americans. And I believe that the economy works best when middle class families are getting tax breaks so that they've got some money in their pockets. And those of us who have done extraordinarily well because of uh, this magnificent uh, country that we live in, that. Uh, we can afford to do a little bit more to make sure we're not blowing okay. up the deficit. Jim, the, 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 the president began this segment, so I think I get the last word. So well, I'm going to take. Well, you're going to get the first right. word in the next segment. <laughs> well, but but he gets the first word of that segment. I get the last word of that segment. I hope. Let me just make this comment. <laughs> he uh, first can, of all, he can, let me, he can, let, me work. let me let me repeat. Let me repeat what I said. Right. I'm not in favor of a five trillion dollar tax cut. That's not my plan. Okay. My plan is not to put in place any tax cut that will add to the deficit. That's point one. So you may keep referring to it as a five trillion dollar tax cut. But that's not my plan. Okay. Number two, let's look at history. My plan is not like anything that's been tried before. My plan is to bring down rates, but also bring down deductions and exemptions and credits at the same time so the revenue stays in, but that we bring down rates to get more people working. My priority is putting people back to work in America. They're suffering in this country. And we talk about evidence. Look at the evidence of the last four years. It's absolutely extraordinary. We've got 23 million people out of work or stop looking for work in this country.
All right. It's just, it's, we've got, we've got, when the president took office, 32 million people on food stamps, 47 million on food stamps today. Economic growth this year, slower than last year, and last year slower than the year before. The, the going forward with the status quo is not going to cut it for the American people who are struggling today.